Well, good morning. It is uh, Thursday, August 27th, 2020. And today uh, our topic is responding to tough times. And uh, we have some folks, uh, you know, down in the Gulf Coast of the United States that are probably enduring some of those tough times today. So we want to certainly keep them in our thoughts and prayers. Hopefully they heeded the warnings and, uh, and evacuated so that uh, all that really is gonna be damaged is property uh, and not loss of life. So well, let's keep them in our thoughts and prayers uh, uh, today and uh, you know, throughout the coming weeks, uh, put them on your prayer list. But we're gonna be going through Proverbs uh, 3, uh, chapter five and six, uh, which are near and dear to my heart. Uh, actually, the quote uh, uh, on my cap here, Proverbs 3, five. So uh, not relaxed, God's in control, but the, the, it's based on that, that quote. So let's hop on in there real quick. I've kind of just got a couple of verses, but I got a lot of uh, commentary and things to go over today for you that I think will really, uh, really help you out. Uh, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. All right, well, let's look at uh, those real quick in the commentary. Uh, and then I've got the, another example here with King Solomon I wanted to go over. But uh, if you want your life to be the very best it can be, you must put your full faith in God, projecting your own limited perspective and honoring him in every area of your life. So as we go through and look at the different goal areas and success areas of our life, we certainly want to keep uh, God centered in those and have God centered goals honoring him uh, in every area of your life. This is the heart of godly living. You submit to the Lord's direction, knowing that he has the answer to your every need and is faithful to provide it. And there's an example in here. uh, We always have these uh, life principles examples in the life principles Bible. That's really why I love this thing. Uh, And this one is listening to God is essential to walking. With God. It talks about King Solomon. He was well known in the Bible, obviously, for his wisdom. And it says, we all need God's wisdom. And when God invited Solomon to ask for whatever he wanted, the king requested wisdom. And you'll find that in 1 Kings uh, chapter 3, verse 9, that God-given wisdom taught Solomon that only a fool tries to solve life prob- life's problems without God's help. Anytime we spend wondering about how to get out of a touchy situation is time wasted. God's guidance is more than sufficient for all the tests or trials we might have to face, but in order to benefit from it, we have to seek it out, just as Solomon did so long ago. In this life, tests come in all shapes and sizes, and and we certainly know that. Some we anticipate, and others, they, they just blindside us. Some tests require us to endure. Others involve making the right decision immediately. Regardless of the difficulty, God instructs us to come to him for the wisdom we so desperately need. And uh, it's kind of funny how things come about. I think I told you before, I never looked forward uh, into these devotions because I I, I swear sometimes these things just change uh, as, as, as we need them in our life. And yesterday, I very seldom stop mid-chapter in a book, uh, and I just kind of go through you know chapter a, a day. And uh, but yesterday, I did for some reason. I, I stopped mid-chapter, and I, I really didn't know why. I just decided to. Uh, and so after I, I read the devotional this morning, I hopped in here, and uh, right where I stopped uh, was a quote uh, by Deepak Chopra, and it said, "Our intentions attract the elements and forces." the events, the situation, the circumstances, and the relationships necessary to fulfill the intended outcome. We don't need to become involved in the details. In fact, trying too hard may backfire. Let the non-local intelligence synchronize the actions of the universe to fulfill your intentions for you. I'm not real keen on the non-local intelligence, but I think uh, (laughs) I'll I'll go with God on that one. But it says, what does it mean to believe you'll get what you want? It means maintaining a positive expectancy, going about your day with certainty, knowing that you put your future in the hands of powers that are greater than yours. 
And again, I've, I've just thrown it back when it, it, these things happen because it's absolutely God's will that I stopped reading yesterday because we were going to be talking about this today. So pretty cool. Let's get into the devotion here. Uh, tough times have a way of revealing our true nature. And more isn't that true. I know it's been true in my life. Uh, if two people were to face the same dilemma, one may grow closer to God and bear fruit while the other becomes anxious and doubts God's faithfulness. How we respond to trials makes all the difference. And you know, in my coaching, we always talk about a formula called E plus R equals O, event plus response equals outcome. It's always the response that changes the outcome. And this is what this is talking about right here. How we respond to trials makes all the difference. Like it or not, hardship is part of life. Becoming a Christian doesn't change that fact. And that you can find that in John 16, 33. What shifts in our understanding of God's sovereignty, nothing touches our life unless he permits it. Consider David. For example, God allowed a murderous king to pursue him for years. And you can find that all in Samuel. But God but David responded to adversity with faith and called God his stronghold and refuge. Now, if we let them, challenges can grow our faith, change our perspective, or deepen our compassion. But no matter what, the Lord is available to help us in our affliction. Either we can turn toward him for comfort, guidance, and support, or we can get angry and resentful that we're not being rescued from our valley. So when affliction strips away every crutch, one has only the Lord to depend upon. Though some people are destroyed by that kind of situation, others are built into undaunted believers. Uh, and I think that that's just, that's the way it is. That's very true. You can see it in probably, probably seeing examples maybe in your life uh, coming through. I certainly see it in, in, in folks, in non-believers and folks that are, that are young in the faith. But uh, we, we do have to, Keep that faith and, and just, and just like I said, relax. You know, God's in control. All right. Well, we are into Ezekiel uh, today. Uh, Ezekiel for a one through uh, first uh, and through third chapters in our Bible in one year. And a little bit about Ezekiel, just uh, uh, so you can uh, kind of get into context here. Uh, he was a priest and a prophet uh, really during the darkest days of Judah, which was the 70 years of Babylonian captivity uh, that we that they've gone in through and it's broken really down down into three different sections verse uh, chapters 1 through 24 which is where you're starting today it's going to be talking about the judgment against his wayward people um, so those are predictions of a judgment against the wayward people and then when you get to 25 to 32 it's really judgment about the nations and then uh, at the end of it uh, we, we start really getting positive and in, in, in so 33 through 42 he's predicting god's renewed blessing uh, to the repentant people so uh, a lot of good history in here a lot of good life principles a lot of good life lessons so just take it in uh and uh, one of the things that you, i really hadn't discussed before but before your readings uh, uh i would always just just take a moment and just ask God to, to bring out what you're supposed to learn from those readings. Uh, it really does make a difference and be thankful for the fact that, uh, that they're out there for you. Because again, uh, we always want gratitude every day. So uh, be thankful for, for at least the fact you've got an opportunity today. If you're not in the Gulf Coast, doggone, it's a pretty obvious gratitude that you're thankful that you're not in, in the path of that storm this morning. So let's practice some gratitude and let's certainly uh, you know, reach out in our prayers and thoughts uh, to, to the folks down in that area. But anyway, uh, everybody, you know, have a wonderful day. Uh, and, uh, again, I will, I will talk to you tomorrow, but, uh, but just remember, uh, the Proverbs three, five, and six to relax. God is always in control. Have a great day.